Hi there, it's Tropical Rare Seeds here in Africa. What I'm doing is I've got some of the Delonic seed here. I'm just going to show you with the tougher seeds uh, that have the tougher coat, what we need to do is we need to take some of the sandpaper here and we need to abrade the seed coat itself. Obviously for some seeds you wouldn't be doing it uh, this hard to try and abrade the seed coat itself. You just use your common sense, obviously, but these seeds are so tough, um, you'd normally put boiling water over them and leave them overnight. Um, rather than bore you with obviously doing all the seeds, I'm gonna get on to the way actually how I um, propagate my seeds here. What I normally do is, let's say after I've <clears throat> abraded my seeds, these are some uh, Ipomia tuberosa here, they're quite large. I haven't abraded these ones properly, uh, but normally once you abrade them, uh, you put them into the water. This is uh, bottled water, and they're going to uh, swell up, obviously. And these are some different banana seeds as well in there, which um, once those swell up, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, rather than actually put these seeds into a bag, I like to take paper towel, this is some colored paper towel here, some people probably are going to tell me off and say, well look, the dyes are going to inhibit germination, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but rather than actually take the paper towel, this damp paper towel, put the seed inside and stick it inside bags like this, what I like to do is just to save on space, is I take the soaked seeds themselves and I place them in the damp paper towel. What I will do each day is um, I will check these seeds to see if they form a root themselves. Once they form a root, what I will do is obviously I'll prepare my compost. Um, compost here in Africa, it's fairly hard to get hold of, so I've got to mix my own. What I will normally do is I'll use some uh, coconut core. I will use uh, some sterilized loam, which I actually sterilize in the microwave, and, and some manure from different sort of um, animals, either being camel, uh, goat, cow, horse, and that's going to be well rotted, obviously, and I sort of, uh, using my common sense, I mix that all up. What I will do is, if you want to get the, the camera over here, once the seeds themselves obviously form the root, <clears throat> what I do is I place this into peat pots. I just put these little canes here to make sure they don't fall over. And the peat pots, these are actually, these have been imported because you don't get these here in Africa. And I place the seed into the compost. Obviously, sometimes two to three seeds to a pot. And you can see here how they're actually poking their head through. Uh, the reason why I actually germinate these seeds inside is because if I germinate them outside, the, the sun itself heats up the pots. You can actually see how these pots have been bleached because I, I reuse them, but I do actually wash them and bleach them just to make sure there's no bacterial fungal spores. But if I left these outside, the sun is that hot, it will actually cook. And in some instances, it will actually melt uh, the pots itself. So it's, these are different types here. This one here, it's uh, an Epomia nil plant, which is actually native to Africa itself. And it's sort of suited to the austral type weather that we have. It will bloom sometimes in the early winter, it's unusual. So if this one sets seed, what I'm gonna do is obviously, I'm gonna collect seed in my garden, and that one will be available on eBay, probably 2013, uh, maybe 2014, I hope not that late itself. Some of these haven't germinated, um, hopefully they will. I've been soaking some more seed. Um, what I have here, like I showed you, the ones of which have been soaked, Sometimes I will use the baggy method uh, with the seed itself where I do the paper towel. Depending on the seed, if it's a seed which takes longer to germinate, this is a cat's claw vine, uh, which we do find here in Africa. Rather than germinate it in paper towel, which turns to mush, these germinate in about, let's say, four to six weeks in some instances. I'll place a bit of sterilized compost in there. Damp, <clears throat> not wet, you can see the seed in there. Place it. This one requires light to germinate. I'll place it on top of the cupboard itself. Um, where once it forms a root, obviously it's going to go into the pot, uh, germinate inside. I'm going to take it out, leave it then in the shade. And as the <clears throat> as as the plants obviously go up, I will slowly slowly move those into the sun. 
to make sure that there's no sun scorch on the leaves itself because you can't actually take the seedlings and put them straight out into the sun. So for you people who are living in a, <clears throat> in a hot, arid climate in the United States, it might be in Florida, might be Nevada, might be Arizona, Texas, you're probably used to actually gardening in that type of environment. <clears throat> but it goes for anywhere where you do live if you're new to gardening. Obviously, when you get your seed from me, you will get the detailed instructions if it requires soaking, if it requires abrading, um, if it needs light to germinate, if it needs a bit of stratification. That will all become apparent and that will all become clear in the detailed instructions I will give you, which is going to be bespoke to each plant itself. So hopefully you found that video helpful. You can hear my wife in the background there. She's still um, opening the seeds, but I think here I've got some form of um, Meramia itself, which had been soaking, and I think some of these here, and there's some Brugmansia in there, are starting to germinate. There's one just with a root coming out, I think, fairly soon. <clears throat> Most people would label them by species itself, but since I know this is actually Brugmansia, Brugmansia aurea, uh, this one's here, uh, Ipomea, that one's a smaller form of uh, Meramea seed in itself. I know exactly what it is. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. There's going to be some more videos to come from tropicalrareseeds.com. And I hope to see you purchasing some of our products on the eBay store very soon.